Hello students, and welcome to this tutorial about how to save SOLIDWORKS files as DXF files. I have a part here that is very similar to the types of parts you have been making, and I'm going to go through the process of how to save it as a file that the laser cutter can read so we can make all your parts. The first step is to go to File, Save As. Now when you do this, if your part is in an assembly, you might get many options about how to save as. doesn't matter which one you choose it'll work no matter what. You choose the type DXF. Now it's time to pick the name and the location. The file has to go in a folder that has your name on it. I've already made a folder that says Luke Seal Parts to Laser Cut, so I'm going to put it in here. Name it the same thing the way the, as the part is named and add on the thickness of the acrylic it's going to be cut out of. This is important for the laser cutter operator to know what material they're going to cut your parts out of. Also, add a revision number to your file. This will be important for when you make changes in the future. So I have named it properly. I have put it in the right place. My name, same name as the part, thickness, revision, save. So now I'm going to get this menu about uh, how to set up the export of the DXF file. We're going to do annotation views current. Now if I did it in this view, it wouldn't work, and I'll talk more about that later. But for now, just know that I have to do a top view. If your part is modeled differently, you might have to do front or right view. But you can verify that it's top in this lower left corner. And you can see it's straight onto the part, exactly normal to the surface. So that looks good. I'm going to green check it. So now I get this preview of what the DXF file is going to look like. Everything looks good, except there are these counter bore holes. So the laser would try to cut these two circles, and the bigger circle would win, and your holes would be too big, and the part wouldn't work, and you'd have to redo it. So to avoid that problem, you're going to have to delete all these counter bore holes. Doing that is easy. Click on it, click on remove entities. Now you can use the middle mouse button to scroll around and the mouse wheel to scroll in and out. And I have to delete all of them. You can also use the keyboard button delete, not backspace, but delete to delete them. So I'm going to go through and delete all of these counterbores. So that looks good. Save. And that's it. So I have my file saved in my folder. Proper name, thickness, revision. There it is. That's the whole process. A few things to watch out for. One, like I said, is the view. So if your view is slightly tilted like this, you're going to see these extra lines in your preview and you're going to know that you have to go back and change the view because the laser will try to cut these extra lines and it will totally mess up your part and you don't want that. Another thing to look out for is if you have any visible sketches. So if this sketch was visible, it would try to cut all of these little short lines. And then I would end up with all these cuts in my part that I didn't want. So make sure that all of the sketches are hidden. If you do that and the sketches are visible, you can delete the lines in the preview just like we deleted the counter bores. OK, and just to demonstrate revisioning, I'm going to go through and change this. Say Amir came along and told me to make it an inch smaller. There you go, it's an inch smaller. And I have to remake the DXF. So I'm file, save as, type, hold on, type DXF in here. And properly name it thickness rev B because it's a new version. And then I'm going to click save. Make sure I have the right view straight on, top view, green check, remove the counter bores. Now if you do that, you can do an undo here. That's okay. There we go. Almost done. Save. Okay. And now I have the two revisions and the laser cutter operator will want to know about these revisions because they're going to want to cut out the latest one. 
So that concludes the tutorial on how to make DXF files. If you have any questions, you can ask your classmates. Um, you can watch this video again, and if still after all that you don't know, you can come and ask me. Good luck and happy DXF making.